slip the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim
us. Hallelujah. We were created to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. I just love that song. Amen. And I pray that it puts you in the mindset to be here on Sabbath Saturday. Amen. To lift up the name of Yeshua. We are excited about what the Lord has in store for us today. Well, God bless you all this afternoon. (laughs) Hallelujah. This is the woman of God, your host, Pastor Dawn. Amen. And hallelujah, glory to God. This is where we come to release a Shabbat on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. We decree a Shabbat, hallelujah. We decree in this hour your renewal, your restoration, your shift in the name of Jesus, your release in the name of Jesus, your deliverance, glory to God. As we lift up a resounding hallelujah on Shabbat Saturday, amen. It is about releasing a sound, people of God in the atmosphere, and everything and anything that does not align with the purpose and plan of God for your life has to change. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I have come to Shabbat my God. Hallelujah. Because he is my father. Mm, 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 mm. And he gives you and me the privilege of being called his sons and daughters. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is the one people of God, the one and only who can be fully trusted. Amen. The one that we can lean on, the one who cares about all that concerns us. Hallelujah. And I would ask amen that if you are here with us today, we are so grateful, but please, Mute your phone so that you will not interrupt the speaker of the hour. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Father God, hallelujah, he is concerned about everything that concerns us. And we can trust him, hallelujah, that he will never, ever, no never, leave us or forsake us. His presence is with us, people of God. He is protecting us, oh, my God, from dangers seen and unseen. Why? Because we abide. Mm. (laughs) Hallelujah. We abide in the secret place of the Most High God. We dwell. We dwell. Let that sink in with you. Oh, my God, dwelling in his presence dwelling in his presence, hallelujah. And in his presence, the word of God says, there is fullness of joy, amen. So depression cannot dwell there. Illness, sickness, and disease cannot dwell there. Oppression cannot dwell there. Suicide cannot dwell there. Depression cannot dwell there. Lack, people of God, cannot dwell there in the name of Yeshua. We have confidence in him because he is our security and because of his unconditional love. The constant presence of our Heavenly Father is what gives us the strength, my God, today. He is our covering in this hour, my God, today. Did you know that? Mm, 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 mm. Just let that sink in. He is our covering. When there's nothing else that we can have confidence in, no one else that we can have confidence in, he remains faithful, and he is our covering. Amen. Scripture says in Revelation chapter 4, you are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. Hallelujah. You created all things, and by your will, They exist and were created, my God, today. Well, listen, again, this is your host of Shabbat Saturday, Pastor Dawn, and that's what we do, people of God. Every Saturday that we come, I want to thank you for tuning in on this very, very special 
Shabbat Saturday with our featured guest, Apostle Brian Blessing Game. My God, today, powerful, anointed, but so humble man of God. Amen. He takes no hostages. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can rest assured there is a great shaking in the heavenly realms. Oh, my God, today. And we have been given the authority to speak and say something during this hour to Shabbat, our awesome God, to encourage you, people of God. Oh, because this is the day that the Lord has created. He created this day for you, for me. Hallelujah. And we will rejoice and be glad in it as we Shabbat him on today. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Apostle Brian is here with us. Hallelujah. To inspire you to move in the realm of his glory. Hallelujah. Apostle Brian, God bless you, man of God. If you're with us, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, man of God. You are released to bless the people of God. Man of God, go forth and bless the people of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Indeed, it's a privilege and 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 an honor to be. Apostle, are you there? Yes. Praise the Lord. Go for Pastor the Don. Apostle. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. yes. Just wanted to praise the Lord for this opportunity um uh, of being here with you on, on Shabbat the Lord uh today. And I wanna thank you also and pray your God praises for you for allowing me to be here. I don't wanna tell a lie and say I don't wanna be before you long. We just try to flow with what God does. I'm just that's that's just the way I do it. Uh when the anointing lift then I lift as well. But um, today we're, we're we're looking at Psalms the ninety first ninety first Psalm, and uh, some of the things that God has been dealing with me and laying on my heart. As right now, it's like God is just beginning to just flow, just just flow and download a whole lot of stuff. And I feel like there's a lot of things rushing through my mind all at one time. But there's several different things that God was dealing with me and showing me pertaining to Psalms ninety one. And we'll start at the first verse where He says, "He that dwelleth." In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, and my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the, from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And the fifth verse really stands out to me because he says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth through well, by day. Now, Pastor, as you was uh, doing the introduction and everything, there was a lot of things that you said. I felt like you had already uh, brought forth the word that God had, had been laying on me. But there were some things, some key things, some key things that God was really pointing out to me pertaining like especially in the first verse where he says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty the thing that stuck out most was he said that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high you know uh i don't know how long some of you guys may have been saved but or or been in the lord and, and been delivered but that has been the ultimate thing through life that as far as I can remember. We even used to use the term of, you know, getting high. When we was drinking that cognac, when we was doing all kind of things, looking for marijuana and everything, we was actually looking for a high. But this high says we're dwelling with God who is the most high. So we don't have to look for other things trying to feel like we we we're 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 empty. We're void. We have this this thing 
called Jesus, which is the most high. And it said that he that dwells in the secret place. And what God has really been dealing with me about, especially in the last few uh, days or maybe a month or so, there are some things that when we become intimate with God, there are certain things that have to be a secret, if you get what I'm saying, if you get what I mean. Um, and what I mean by that is that any time that God speaks, and, and my mind has been trying to wrap around this uh, even throughout the day, because I was, I was asking God, God, okay, uh, what is it? I mean, there's there's things that you have said to me prophetically. There's there's things that you've actually said on to me one on one. But that that people have to realize and know that any time that God speaks, there's gonna be a battle. Any time that God says He's gonna do a particular thing, there's gonna be a fight. So uh, we have to catch hope and catch keep wisdom alive within our spirits. That when God speaks, it's not necessary that we run around to these different pieces and different things and begin to brought what it is God says that he's going to do. We must do some things with God in secret. There's even particular things that when God speaks to me prophetically through another prophet, there's some things that if there's something he hasn't already spoke to me about, if a prophet brings in something to me new that I'm not aware of, God will say something that he and I, only he and I know about, that will come forth and confirm that it is him. I will know through the Spirit of God that it is God that's speaking and not just that prophet or just a man or woman that's speaking before me. So that's I, good. Yes. So I, I, I uh, you know, I uh, encourage people to pray and have God to sharpen their ears as to what it is that, you know, what it is that God is speaking to them in that day and in that hour. But he said that they shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, uh, I'm looking at the NET. It says they should reside. They should live there. You know, not just come and get a word and then run <laughs> and then run with it or run in it. Apostle, are you there? The Lord, Hallelujah, glory yes, the, to God. Yes, the the, uh, the the phone just dropped. But anyway, it's not enough for us to just come and get a one-time hit. We must we must continuously come and dwell in that secret place in God, not just on Sunday, but throughout the week. I think back to when I was in the world. When I was in the world, if I really enjoyed something. It was a continuous act. I used to run the nightclubs Tuesday through Sunday. Monday was my only sinful Sabbath. Only reason I had that day of rest was because nobody, no clubs were really open on Monday. But I find that when it comes to the church folks now, they are so willing to just come out of that secret place. They don't want to continuously abide in the things of God in this particular day and in this hour. And we realize that times are really crucial and times are really hard. We can see the signs that's taking place uh, throughout the earth, not only throughout the earth, within our own government, but we must at this time come to a place to where we can trust God. And I think you, you hit on that. You did, you mentioned that part of God being our part of our place that we can trust God. And, Amen. You know, and, and with that, I, I go on to the to the second verse because he says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, he is my God. And he says, in him I will trust. And I have learned through the course of ministry that he is all that. He's my fortress, he's my God, he's he's my refuge, he's my place, he's my, my very present help in a time of trouble. I've learned that. But one thing I, I, I've also learned about the word trust, and what I've learned is that, is that to me there's, there's three different stages in this thing of Christianity, the Christianity walk. 
And the first stage is believe. For the word says, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life. That is good. That right there in itself is a miracle. But then God calls us to this place called faith. And in faith, he says, faith is the evidence of things not seen. Um, I mean, a hope for, but the evidence of things not seen. But then when we go in this faith, for years we walk by faith. It says, through him and by him do we have our being. So during that particular time, we're moving. We're moving by God, and God is moving through us, and we're moving through God. But then God will take us to a place called this thing called trust. And mm. this part is kind of just, it is actually strategic because now God is not longer, he's no longer asking you to put your hands on particular things. Now he's gotten you to a place to where you're having to trust God. This is where I see a lot of saints, even leaders, mess up and miss God because for so many years they've been used to putting their hands on particular things and not actually trusting him. When God say he's going to do a thing, you got to be able to trust him. And mm. take your hands off. Let God do what he wants to do. And you and I conversated a little bit about this uh, just previously before before we got on here. You see, what we don't realize and what we don't understand is that God brings us to the place to where we become heirs and joint heirs of the royal priesthood. So when we get into that particular place, God is like Psalms 23 is saying. He's saying, I, call, I lead you beside the still waters. And then he said, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. Now, green mm. pastures is a place of prosperity. Prosperity. But listen, he said, David said, he maketh me lie down in green pastures, a place of prosperity. Now, we remember that God said, and the word of God said that David was a man of war. He was a man of war. But yet, God has brought him to a place to where he's now making him lay down in a place of prosperity. And a lot of times I see a lot of people who have been doing so many things in ministry for so long that when God brings them to this place of rest, to this place to where he's saying, lay down, I want to give it to you, people miss that mark. Because so many times we've been taught in the old ways that God is just not going to give it to you on a silver platter. Yes, the devil is a lie. There are some things that God wants to just give it to you so that you can't take credit for what God is doing, so that you Amen. won't feel God's glory. There is times that God will tell you to be still and know that I'm God. And during this particular time that you're being still, you have to realize and know that that's going to be part of the battle, that's going to be part of the, part of the fight, because some of your kin folks are not going to be able to understand why you're not doing the things they think you ought to be doing. And that's okay because most of us are used to getting backlash from our family members, especially if they're not believers. But when it really becomes a fight is when you have your own brother and sisters that are of the faith who then want to give you ridicule because you're in a place where God has said, be still. Yes. Don't move. My God. Mm, mm, mm. Don't keep move. Going. Be it. still. Mm. Know that I'm mm. God. There's some things mm. that God wants to bring about to explode. And I'm saying this Ooh. to some, some, of, some of those that's, that's listening here. Don't be surprised if God tell you and speak to you and tell you, come off your job. I want to be your source. That is very real. People don't mm-hmm. understand the different warfare that people come to or go through in order to be who God has called them to be. So because of the different warfares, let me go here, because some people don't like to talk, talk about this, but it's real. Because of the different warlocks and the different witches and stuff that you had to fight through in order to get, to, get your ministry started and off the ground, there's, there's some times when God would say, okay, that battle right now is not over. You have withstood the, the test. I need for you to just stand still and not let me show the witches and the warlocks who you really are in me. But because sometimes we get this urgency to want to, to wanna hurry that word along 
and try to make that word manifest, we come out of alignment with what God is doing and sometimes forfeit or either delay what God is saying he's going to do. I've got... (laughs) I've got a situation right now. I, I, I heard God say what he said, and everything began to line up. I mean, everything was begin, it was beginning to line up. I could see it in the spirit and in the natural as well. But just because God has spoke, there has been a fight. There has been a, there has been a war. But now because he spoke, and it doesn't look like it's going to come back, I still have to hold fast to what God said because the word says he's not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, whether or not he do it. If he spoke it, shall not he bring it to pass? We have to realize that we have to stay in that secret place in order for us to maintain the trust that we have to have in order to see the full manifestation of what God said he's going to do. He said in the third verse, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare and the fowler and from the Norsum pestilence. It don't matter what the enemy is doing. It don't matter what snare he set up. It don't matter what the father is doing. God will rescue you, dust you off, place you back on the right path that you're supposed to be on, and still what he has promised you that was going to come to pass is going to come to pass. This part I'm I'm sharing with everybody because it's a part of my life. I know when I, this is not part of what I read. This is something that God has 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 showed me. I was, two three years ago, God called me off my job to go into the ministry full time. Everything was lovely. I thought it was hunky dory. I was ecstatic. I was okay with it. But then when the money got dry, I lost I lost fake I, I lost vision. I lost focus, and I thought I could go back to a job and do what I used to do and make some money. But God showed me different. A heart murmur that God healed me of back in 1989 or 90, that heart murmur came back. But once I submitted myself unto God, got back in in the line of obedience, God healed my heart, placed me back on the right track, reset me, realign me, and now I'm beginning to see what God has said that he was going to bring to pass years ago is now beginning to line up. I'm just here trying to encourage people that whatever God may have told you, there's no weapon formed against you that's going to prosper. Every time it rises up against you in judgment, you're going to condemn, for this is the heritage of the Lord, and our righteousness is of God, saith the Lord. We can't do this thing thinking about our own righteousness. It's got to be done by the grace and for God's righteousness. Amen. My God, today, amen. Don't stop, man of God. You, you on fire. <laughs> amen. Amen. Now, he, he also says, he should cover thee with his feathers, and other his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield. And thy buckler. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share this part. This is a brief part. I had someone message me the other day. They said they had a dream. And they said in the dream, uh, they, they they lost some things, and in the, in the, in the, it was very scary. So I, I began to uh, talk with them, and I asked them, well, did the, did the dream seem like it was real? And it was like, yeah, it was real. And, and what a lot of people don't understand is that God does speak, and he speaks through dreams. He said in Numbers 12 and 6, he said, um, whenever there's a prophet, he said, I, I speak to them in dreams and in visions. He said, but when my prophet Moses, he said, I don't speak with him in dreams and visions, but I speak to him face, face to face. And what, other, what people don't understand is that you, you need somebody that, 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 that's got a word from the Lord that's in their mouth. You need somebody that's got a word from them that's in their mouth that can speak, speak a word in due season to change situations. And uh, what 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 God laid on me to give to them was Isaiah forty one ten, and it talks about fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. 
Now, this is a promise from God, and God is telling us, fear not. And I'm a little bit ahead of myself because I really wanted to say this for the fifth verse, but I'm still going to do it anyway. But God is telling us, fear not. And on the way to where I am now, I begin to wonder, I was going to say, how many times is fear not in the Bible? It's 365 times that fear not shows up in the Bible. It's 365 days in a year. So there's a fear not for each day that we live. God doesn't want us to be living in a state of fear. Fear is something that paralyzes us. Fear has a torment. And the way we get away from fear is by dwelling in that secret place with God having that perfect love because it's perfect love. The Bible says God is love. The Bible says God is, is love. So if we have that perfect love, that perfect love, that perfect union with God, that perfect intimate communi- communion with God, that fear will be cast out. And a lot of times the, the fear thing is, and, and, you know, I've heard it talk now. I've, I've probably used it a couple of times myself. But when you look at the word fear, it stands for false evidence of being real. It's just a shadow of death. It's not actually death itself. So what we must realize is that the enemy's greatest tactic is a lie. And nine times out of ten, that lie is brought to us to cause us to fear. Once we fear, his motive is to get us to operate of what God has said. If God's saying right, go right, the enemy is going to try to strike us and make us go left so that we'll miss the mark, so that we'll miss our blessing, so that we'll miss our promise, so that we'll miss our call. We must always continuously stay in that secret place, abiding under the shadows of the Most High in order to be productive in the thing called the kingdom of God. And I'm just I'm just I'm just ecstatic of what, what God is doing and what God is saying. Uh in the fourth verse, I'm looking at the NET, it says, He will shelter you with his wings. You will find safety under his wings. His faithfulness is like a shield or a protective wall. We are covered in more ways than what we realize or what we really know. I've heard him say, God, we thank you for bringing us through seen and unseen danger. We don't know what all the enemy be planning and what all he be plotting, but God sits high and he looks low. And there's some things that he will reveal to us to detour us out of snares. But if we don't stay in that secret place, then how will we know? How 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 can we trust God if we if we if we don't be still at times and find out what it is that God is now beginning to to reveal unto us. Another thing that uh, God shared with me when he talked about, when this person asked me about the dream that they had, was uh, he, he told me, take them to Isaiah 43 and 2. He says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. He says, and when thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned. Neither shall thy flame kindle upon thee. We are covered more than what we realize. More than what we realize. And not only does that covering take care of just us, but it also is a covering to those that are connected to us. But the key is um, not not fearing. When I go to Isaiah 40, 43 and 1, I, I just read that and that was 1 and 2. It goes on down to the third verse. It says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. And in the fifth verse, again, it comes up. He says, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Now God is talking about, talking about because you dwell within that secret place, God is talking about your seed. Not only is he covering you, but he's covering your seed. These are promises that 
we must continuously, as far as our families go, are gone, because we dwell within that secret place, we have a right to beckon God for his covering, his protection of our seed. Not only just the covering, not only just protection, but I need my seed to be saved. I need my seed to be delivered. I need my seed to be sanctified by the word of God, and I need my seed to be filled with the Holy Ghost as the Spirit of God give forth the utterance. We don't talk about that enough in the church anymore either. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going through places where people are acting like they want to get saved, but they don't want to get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We as a people, we as a leader, we as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we've got to get back to the old path and begin to preach and teach more so on the indwelling and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we can move. That's the only way we can do the things of God and accomplish the things of God. It's going to take the spirit of God because God said he don't move by his power. He don't move by his might, but he moves by his spirit. Amen. Amen. My God, today, man of God, we're talking real good here. Amen. Uh, you on a, you're on a flow here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But yes, it's it's important. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think your call, your phone dropped again. Glory to God. But we're going to wait for you, man of God, because this word is so powerful. And we take authority over the airways right now in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. We bind up every interference in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you, Lord, for the release of this powerful word, God. Hallelujah. And we're going to wait for the man of God to get back on the call. Amen. I praise God that, you know, he said something so powerful about dwelling. And, and I noticed something that the text says, he who dwells. It didn't say he who dwelt or he who will dwell, it is in present tense, people of God. You know, the Spirit of God won't protect those who stopped by, amen, who stopped dwelling, amen, or those who didn't make the decision yet to be with him. It means that the one whom God will protect is someone who actively, hear me real good, actively lives a godly life in the presence of Yah, amen, the one who amen. decided to be with him, amen, the one who continues to be with him. Go forth, apostle. Amen, amen. I was I was just going to uh, go back a little bit more into uh, the, the part of, you know, the, the part of where I was saying how God calls David to rest beside, a, a rest, rest in the place of prosperity. See, what we, what, what some people don't realize is that when God brings you off your job, job, off your job to do the work of the ministry full time, there, there's times that that God is going to have you to speak a word. He's going to have you speak a word because, see, what we don't realize is that the, the scripture is true. It says that we are heirs and joint heirs of the royal priesthood. Listen, I know people go get mad at me when I say this. There's a place and there's a time in God that God will require you to speak. If you're a king, have, let's do it like this. How many kings and how many queens have you seen that actually put their hands to work? They don't do it. They just speak. Whatever they speak, it happens. And what people don't understand is that we are royal priesthood, and God brings us to a particular place to where he wants us to speak to the different elements, speak to the different ailments, Speak to the different diseases and watch him move on the words that we speak. And I don't know if people will be, be able to grasp that. That's very much real. That's very much real. That's why they say they that preach the gospel must live of the gospel. And uh, you you get a lot of My people God. get lost. <laughs> you get a lot of people get lost when you begin to think or talk like that because some people have not yet come out of carnality. They're still walking around with the carnal mind. And, and see, the Bible tells us that it's foolishness. The spiritual things of God are, spool, are foolishness to the carnal mind. So that's why it's, a, a, it's, it's imperative 
that we begin once more again to preach and teach the importance of what it means to be saved, what it means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I've heard people actually, you know, brag about the fact that they got in the water and was baptized in the water. That's good. That's fine. That's dandy. But John himself, the one who did the baptism of water, he said there was one that came after me who's greater than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unlatch. He said he will not baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with fire. And that of the I'm Holy about Ghost. to run up in here, man of God. You better <laughs> preach. So, 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 I mean, that that indwelling, that infilling, that's the things that's going to keep you strong enough to where when the winds do blow, you don't run a different direction. That's going to keep you anchored in the things of God. That's going to keep you anchored to the place to where, like we were saying, you can stay in that secret dwelling place under the most high God. That's that that right there is the key. That is the ingredient. I tell a lot of people, I said the if you if you took the, the the Holy Spirit in your left hand and you took the word of God in your right hand and you placed them together, I said that right there it will gel. It will mix every time. The only problem you have a problem with the spirit and the word of God not coming together is when you try to put flesh in the middle. And we must crucify the flesh daily. Amen. 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 Mm, 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 mm. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Glory to God. Mm. With that, That's Pastor, I, I think. <laughs> with that, Pastor, I think I'm. I'm. I think I'm done. I think I'm. I'm going. Yeah, I think I'm. 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 I'm released now because I can feel the anointing lifting. Like I said, when He lifts, I lift. But Amen. indeed, Amen. It was, it was a pleasure to be in in the midst and in the presence with you again. I thank you and everyone for uh, listening and uh, having me on today. It was indeed my my blessing, my my privilege, my joy. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man of God. It it has been our honor. Amen. To just hear with such clarity the word of God being released. Amen. And people, God, it, it was just so eloquently, simply. Hallelujah. Spoken. There's no way that you cannot understand that dwelling in God's presence, amen, is a conscious choice. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a conscious choice. And it is so powerful that it is a necessity. It is a necessity in this hour that we learn to go there, that we become acquainted with that place. Amen. It is something that we decide to do, not out of necessity or grudge, but out of a willing heart. Hallelujah. Dwelling in the secret place of the Most High means that we constantly seek his love, his comfort, his protection, and believe me, God will protect those who want to know him better and on a deeper level. Amen. So thank you, man of God. Hallelujah. We bless God for you. Hallelujah. God will provide. He will speak to us. He will make himself known to us in that secret place. Hallelujah. In that private place, in that reserved place. Hallelujah. Just for you and him. My God, today. Mm, 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 mm. I'm excited about this work. Yes, my God, today. This place is, you know, I realize that the the secret place is so hidden that it takes a lot of effort and energy and sacrifice for a person to find it. That means that you're going to lay down some things, my God, today. The secret place isn't reserved for lazy, it's not reserved for the wicked. Uh 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 uh. It isn't for the people who don't see the value of being with their creator. Amen? My God, today. Amen. His secret place. You've got to respect the owner. The owner is Yahweh. Amen? He will not allow someone to be part of his dwelling place that does not respect him or his presence. My God, today. But the righteous, mm, those who seek him with everything that's within them, 
they make an effort to find the place of refuge where he dwells, my God, today. Thank you so much, man of God, for being with us and for this word. Oh, mm, I know it set a lot of people free and has made some people ask questions about where they are. Amen. It's even allowed me to reflect on some things like, are you striving to dwell in the God's secret place? Mm. Do you make a commitment, drive to dwell in God's secret place? Are you constantly looking for ways to stay close to him? Hear me real good. Are you yearning, yearning, as the scripture says, as a deer pants it after the water? Are you yearning to be on God's side every single moment of your life? Yes, I said every single moment because he is just as eager and willing, more willing, hallelujah, to take care of you and to be a part of your life. Amen. Not moments. Hear me real good. Not just moments, but every part of your life he wants to be a part of. And all you have to do is stay in God's secret place and be at peace with him. Amen. Like you said, man of God, stand still and let Yah show you your enemies. Who is in you or who is with you? Who is against you? Man of God, you yeah. mentioned about your pain that you went through, but your pain was not in vain. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Amen. As you mentioned to us, do we trust him on today? Is He is well acquainted with what we need. Amen. He Amen. already knows us. He knows our beginning Amen. and our end. He knows what we've gone through, the persecution. But, you know, we must be willing to let him expose those areas in our life that need his presence and his healing and his power and the anointing that truly does destroy every yoke. Oh, my God, today. How? What are you willing to lay down to go into his presence? Hear me. Are you willing to die? I know you and I talked about Moses and how he was willing to go Yet into the presence of God, into the glory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Even though it meant his life may have been taken from him, because the word of God says no man can see God unless they're, you know, you're going to die. And I mean, leave yeah. that, that is not just a spiritual death that occurs. Amen. Because it is a renewing that lines up with the perfect will of God, the nature and nature of God, the characteristic of who he is. You cannot go into his presence being not like him. He can't connect with anything that does not reflect him. And Moses was so set that he wanted to go into the presence of God. But look at the benefits as a result of that, the transfiguration that occurred in him as a man. And it was so powerful and so evident that when he came from out of the presence of God, it yet was still with him. I believe that's what we have an opportunity to tap into, people of God. When we go into the secret place, amen, that he is always with us. His presence, the abode, the kabod, as as I've heard someone say, is with us because we become glory carriers. And I digress, but I just want you to know, man of God, I'm excited about this word on Shabbat Saturday. Hallelujah. That has been released on today. And I know that there's someone else who's very excited about what you have released on today. My God, you sparked something here on this broadcast. Amen. Listen, people of God, do not doubt what God has released or what he is going to do for you, for us in this season. I believe that because of the word that has been released in this hour, that we are at our place of victory. If we learn how to go in, ha, huh? go in and get what you need. We receive this word on today, man of God, in this hour. Hallelujah. And, Father God, I thank you you, that you will demonstrate your mighty deliverance in this hour through the word released by Apostle Brian. My God, today, hallelujah, we sabbat the Lord and expect a great move of God in your lives. And we decree and declare your mighty acts, Father God, as a result of this word that has been released in the atmosphere. You are almighty God and all-knowing, and we align ourselves to be in position to receive our healing, our deliverance, our breakthrough, our release, Father God. Hallelujah. 
Father God, I thank you that you love us through our pain and bring us to our place of victory. So we will not fret, like you said, man of God. We will not fear. We will not worry. Because yes. we know that you hear us, Lord God, and you hear the hallelujahs and the shabaks that have been released this day on behalf of your people. Hallelujah. We shabak you now for the spiritual breakthrough, Father God. Hallelujah. People of God, begin to believe God. He can take you from where you are now to where you are to be to fulfill your purpose, in the name of Yeshua, hallelujah. Abba, Father, I pray that you will fill this broadcast with your glory. Even the real yes. broadcast, those who are under the sound of our voices now and later on the rebroadcast will experience a great manifestation of your power and your presence. Touch the life and nature of God within them now. Change is taking place now. I want to thank you all for stopping by for another Shabbat Saturday. I want to thank you, great man of God, Apostle thank Brian, you. blessing game, hallelujah. Thank you, Kimmy Kim, our producer, hallelujah, and Elation Radio, hallelujah, our Elation Radio family, I Heart Bricker Radio, and you who are here with us, who are our listening audience, I pray the Lord will continue to bless you, continue to enlarge your borders and territories in the name of Jesus. And thank you for joining us again this Shabbat Saturday Apostle. Thank you thank for you having so me. Thank you so much, my bless. God, today. Oh, my Amen. God, you're such a humble man, but there's power, man of God. I, 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 I feel the power. Hallelujah. Everyone, come back next Saturday. To God be the glory. You are absolutely right, man of God. To God Amen. be the glory. Hallelujah. Everyone, please come back next Saturday on Shabbat Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 p.m. I think that is Pacific uh, Standard Time for another Shabbat Saturday at this great station, Elation Radio. And again, Kimmy Kim, woman of God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love, love, love you to life. Our producer for her example, for her huge heart. Amen. May the Lord God continue to use you, great woman of God. Now, please close us out. Shalom, everyone.